Donald Trump is the president of this country. Many people don't want to accept it. But in my personal opinion, most of those people who don't want to accept it, I would say, no, I'm sorry, I would say the people who don't want to accept it are actually a very tiny minority relative to the 60 plus million people who voted for Hillary Clinton, okay? Michael Moore hit a home run with Fahrenheit 9-11, criticizing the Bush administration. He made another movie, Fahrenheit 11-9. I have this story from Forbes, from Forbes. It's gonna be fake, it's not a hyper-partisan outlet. I think Forbes even might lean a little left and it says, Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 11-9 and Life Itself, I don't know what that is, bomb at Friday box office. Michael Moore made a movie about Trump, Trump being bad, and like the trailer shows like, you know, white nationalists and weird right-wing groups. And it makes it seem like we're in this, you know, hellscape. And it flopped. It, uh, it flopped really bad relative to Fahrenheit 9-11, at least according to Forbes. This is the only source I've checked, but, you know, I, 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 I trust Forbes. I think they're, they're, they're fairly decent. So let's take a look at what they say. They say, since 1982, there have been only 14 documentaries that have opened on more than 1,000 screens. And the vast majority of them were Disney nature docs or music documentaries like Michael Jackson's This Is It or Justin Bieber, Never Say Never. Before yesterday... The only three exceptions were expelled. No intelligence allowed, 1,000 screens in 2008. Believe, about 1,000 screens in 2013. And Death of a Nation, 1,005 theaters in 2018. Oh, Death of a Nation, that's like the pro-Trump one, I think. None of those three opened with more than $3 million on their respective opening weekends, and none made it past 7.7 7 million. So in that sense, it's no surprise that Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 11.9 tanked in its whopping 1,719 theater-wide release debut. And this is where it gets crazy, because Fahrenheit 9-11, about Bush, opened in like half, I think less than half of, the, of, of those theaters, and made something like 10 times as much money, or like eight times as much money. They say, to be fair, Briarcliff Entertainment had to know that this isn't 2004, and that the lightning in a bottle variables that turned Fahrenheit 9-11 into a box office juggernaut just weren't there, the anti-Bush documentary opened right as Michael Moore's becoming a household name thanks to his Oscar-winning Bowling for Col Columbine and his fiery Oscar acceptance speech. And it became a lightning rod for controversy after then-Disney-owned Mirama Miramax dropped it like a hot potato only for, rel uh, for relative newbie Lionsgate to sweep it up just as they had with Dogma five years prior. Cue a jaw-dropping $23.9 million debut in just 868 theaters in June of 2004, still a record for an under thousand theater release. It earned $119 million domestic, $222 million worldwide, by far the biggest for any kind of conventional documentary film, but 14 years later, folks are even less likely to flock to an openly political documentary, and frankly, even those on the left don't necessarily want to pay to see a 125 minute crash course on the current horrors of the day, I'd gladly pay triple the ticket price to see a version of the movie without you-know-who babbling incoherently. Are they talking about Trump? I'd argue that Moore's motives in making the movie were less about spreading the word through its contents than in using the film's publicity tour to get the word out on various news media outlets. It earned $1 million yesterday and will probably make around $2.89 million for the, first, for, the week, uh, for the weekend for a miserable $1,682 per theater average although it'll outgross Where to Invade Next, 3.9 million in 2015, and thus become Moore's biggest grossing doc since Capitalism, A Love Story, back in 2009, it doesn't mean anything for the political left any more than the under $6 million performance of Dinesh D'Souza's Death of a Nation. Death of a Nation made more money? Here's the thing. I think in this day and age, we go to the movies to get away. We play games to get away. I, 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 I have complained about things like Crunchyroll because of their and Magic the Gathering, not because they want social justice or whatever, but because they're entering the fray. My, and, and, and let me clarify. I don't care that, if you're not Magic the Gathering, it's a card game, you know, and they have like angels and, and demons and goblins and stuff. People have complained that the art on the cards, a card game, like an angel, normally they used to be like beautiful, busty women. Now they're more like thick and masculine women. I don't care at all. I do not play my magical card game with a strategy fantasy card game so that I can contemplate the full figureness of the Sierra uh, Sarah Angels. That's a, it's a card. And uh, so I really don't care how they draw the card. I like it because it's like chess. It's like poker and chess combined, as it's been described. But when they start snootily, you know, gloating about the dumb men and stuff like that, I'm like, quiet, quiet, quiet. Like, you're doing all right. You're doing all right. It's like, we don't need that. 
Go ahead and make your characters how they should be, like how you think they should be. Like you're the artist, no problem whatsoever, you know. Um, but just don't be mean and snooty and elitist. The same goes for people on the anti-SJW side too, because I've criticized some prominent anti-SJW people for being mean, for being dicks. You don't accomplish anything by being mean to people. You know, my thing is like, if you're gonna make something, then just like if someone makes something I don't like, I just say like, hey, that's really cool. Like congratulations. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna show up. You know, and I don't know, whatever. Back, back to the point. Back, back to Michael Moore. Thing is, right now, there are a lot of people who really love Trump. There are a lot of people who really hate Trump. But in my opinion, there are more people who love Trump than hate him. Because the other day, I, I tweeted about this earlier. The other day, uh, I, I accidentally booked my flight a day late. And so I'm still in Milwaukee. And I have some friends here. And um, they're not political in any way. And so for a brief moment, I existed in a world outside of politics. And I said, so are you guys uh, following any of the Trump stuff? Oh, what Trump stuff? Oh, I like the Kavanaugh. Who? And I was like, oh, oh my God, they don't know. <laughs> and I said, huh, so how about them Cubs? And it was kind of refreshing. And I feel like you're gonna put a movie out like this. Michael Moore is operating under the assumption that Twitter is real life, which it isn't. It's a hyper-concentrated group of very politically active people. There's a lot of people on Twitter. Most people, don't, most people don't tweet. They just follow. So there are a lot of people who peripherally may hear the news, but just don't care. And I have said this time and time again, people don't care about politics. You think they do, but they don't, because what they're really doing is talking about the next season of Game of Thrones, because they want to know what the Khaleesi is going to do and the dragons and the white zombie people. The last thing they're concerned about is whether or not, you know, Trump is whatever and whatnot. A lot of, a lot of these people are uninitiated, right? Uh, not uh, un, un, uh, inactive, I guess. They're not activated, as we would say. But there are a lot of people who love Trump who are tired of the news going after him. So it's kind of like this. I feel like Trump supporters are like, why do you keep attacking the guy that I like? And that people who don't like Trump and the left are kind of like, yeah, I get it. They don't like Trump. And so they kind of just don't pay attention. You hear enough in the news that Trump is doing bad things. And the left says, but we knew that. And the right goes, they did it again. They keep lying about Trump. What happens? Dinesh D'Souza puts out a documentary. It makes a little bit more money. Michael Moore puts out a documentary, nobody cares. Nobody wants to see it. So another thing I want to point out though, it bombed, right? But we shouldn't, we shouldn't be looking at this documentary and comparing it to Fahrenheit 9-11, which was explosive. Um, that's kind of funny, anyway. Um, because look, often people look to the biggest thing someone has done and assume everything should go up from there. I, I, I get really frustrated when people are like, they name a band and call them a one-hit wonder. And I don't want to name, I, I, don't, I don't have any on the top of my head, but I'm like, that band's not a one-hit wonder. They have like 15 songs that were singles that charted. It's just that one of those songs did so well, that's the only thing you heard. You know, it's like, um, actually, Got Ye is probably, uh, Goat Ye, Got Ye, that song, Somebody I Used to Know. There was a thing, an article I read calling him a one-hit wonder, and I'm like, the dude's got like 30 songs with over 10 million views on YouTube. If he didn't have somebody I used to know, you wouldn't call him a one-hit wonder. You'd call him like a moderately successful musician with a bunch of hits, like 10 million views. There are bands that, uh, big bands that don't have that much. Granted, you know, like, um, you know, Justin Bieber gets like 2 billion views. Despacito has like 2 billion views or whatever. But then so that's big. But just because one song by this dude was massive doesn't mean he only had one hit. It just means it dramatically outpaced. So Michael Moore made this documentary a long time ago, and it was a huge success. And he's continued to make documentaries, and he brought in a couple, a, a couple million, almost three million bucks in a weekend. I really, how much did it cost to produce this documentary? Probably what, a couple hundred thousand dollars, um, maybe, maybe higher because of high-profile people involved and their expenses are going to be higher. But a documentary advice would cost anywhere from like twenty to fifty thousand dollars. Sometimes when they bring in more cameras, they do helicopters and they fly to Antarctica. Yeah, two hundred thousand. But think about that. You spend a couple hundred grand, you make three, four million dollars. It ain't bad. You made money. So then they talk about Amazon's life itself, which I don't think really matters. But they, uh, so yeah, that's basically basically it. But the, the, the one thing I want to point out is that I feel like Michael Moore's base is fractured in half. There's that famous speech before the election where Michael, it's like audio from Michael Moore where he says they're going to vote for Trump and it's going to be the biggest fuck you to the political establishment. There are a lot of people in, in Flint, in Detroit, who probably liked Michael Moore for highlighting the, the, the collapse of the auto industry and, and these free trade agreements. And now that base is split because a lot of people are on the left 
and they're saying, you know, I hate Trump, and a lot of people are on the right saying at least Trump is doing something about jobs and the industry and trade. And Michael Moore is now positioned himself against. Like the, the interesting thing I've noticed in the political climate right now is that the old right, the old Christian conservative evangelical, is mostly fractured and gone. And the new right, whatever it is, people who voted for Trump. When I went to these Trump rallies, they were like, never voted before, never considered themselves to be Republican, totally independent, and now they consider themselves to be conservative Republicans. There has been a weird shift where many people who used to be on the left have split, and now we have the far left and the left, and now we have like the center left and the moderates and the center right, and the weird, you know, like the, the I, don't, I don't call people weird, but like the old hardcore Christian conservative groups have like dissipated and have fractured. So now I look at someone like Michael Moore and I'm like, Maybe you're just, uh, you're not far left enough, but you need to be on the left. But the people who watch your stuff aren't going to be into, in, you know, into this kind of thing. And you've probably lost a lot of your support base who are, who are interested in the work you did when you called out government corruption as it pertained to trade and things like that. Michael Moore is existing in this weird position. So I feel kind of bad. You know, like, Michael Moore wants to make a documentary, sure. You know, he sprayed Flint water on some guy's house. I think it's silly. But uh, you know what? It's never going to be as big as Fahrenheit 9-11. They called it a bomb. I don't know if that, that's technically a bomb if you compare it to the, the rest of his documentaries or other documentaries. It's not as good as, uh, apparently didn't do as well as Death of a Nation. But uh, compared to his peak, Michael Moore is not as big as he was. But I don't think that's fair anyway. But you know what? I'm never going to watch Fahrenheit 11-9. I'm just not going to because I'm not really interested in it and its framing and everything like that. And that's why I didn't go and none of my friends went. And there you go, Michael Moore. Um, I just think, final thought, I'll say it one more time. What he pitches, who he is, has been split in half by this weird new reality we live in with a different, the left is, is different, the right is different, everything's different. And Michael Moore is in this weird space in between where he probably lost a lot of support. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I am finally flying home. So thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow on the main channel at 4 p.m. A lot of people don't know I have two channels. Go to youtube.com slash timcast if you've made it this far for more videos. I'll see you then.